Hi, I'm Solomon from Bobbitt Club. And I'm Sarah. I... This is my fiance, and she's here today to help me make monkey wax, a paste wax that we're going to use for go equipment, but that you could use for um, any kind of wooden furniture, handles, to, uh, wooden handles for tools in your kitchen or, or workshop, and other such uses. You ready to get started? Yeah. All right, let's do this. Paste wax. And that is a wax to use for boards, bowls, cutting boards, cribs, pretty much anything you want um, to preserve that's made of wood. Um, but you can use it on other things like uh, if you have a saw in the garage you want to keep from oxidizing. So let me go through what I've got laid out here. I've got the tools and the ingredients that I intend to use to make the wax along with some other things like uh, wax paste that I've used before and what I thought of that. So, uh, beginning from the beginning, um, when we've got um, a bowl or a board, something we want to preserve, we want to do two things. We want to um, provide a, a coating, and that's what the wax does, is provides a protective coating. And we also want to do something to strengthen the wood. Um, you don't have to do that. So when you, when you get a bowl, you might have a bowl, um, it may come like this. So here's a bowl that's... Um, it's seen better days, but what, what the process is when a bowl is, um, you know, on the lathe, they've, they've spun it, they've carved it, um, a lot of the time what the makers do is just put a layer of lacquer on it, right there on the lathe before they even take it off. And what that does is it gives you a protective shiny layer, so it comes out very shiny, and it keeps the wood pretty much exactly on how it was when it was cut. So you'll keep um, roughly the same shade of wood unless you put a, a darkening agent in the lacquer. And um, so that's a, a varnished finish, um, which is pretty for a while, but I don't think it helps protect the wood nearly as much as putting some sort of oil into the wood. So um, here's a piece of wood, which again is pretty, but it doesn't have that layer of lacquer. Um, it's got a nice shiny finish, um, so I would guess that has just been buffed with wax. And you can use other things like Danish oil, uh, mineral oil is a petroleum product that a lot of people use on cutting boards. Um, but what I intend to use um, is linseed oil. Now linseed oil is a polymerizing oil, which means that it reacts with oxygen and creates a polymer within the wood. Um, so it works into the pores of the wood polymerizes there and, form, and makes the, the wood a bit stronger. It does darken the wood a little bit, so that's something to be aware of if you're using linseed oil. Here's what I've used so far. It's a, a boiled linseed oil beeswax paste that I picked up in Japan. And it um, was a little bit rough on the hands because it was made with boiled linseed oil. So when we're getting into what I'm going to use for this product, I've got beeswax, linseed oil, and turpentine. Um, so beeswax is great. Um, beeswax is a, a natural product, um, technically food safe. I wouldn't really want to eat it, but um, like raw linseed oil, um, it, is, it is something you can have on your hands, um, so assuming you don't have any allergies to it. And so beeswax is my first choice. You can also use things like paraffin wax. Um, certain wax pastes will mix in 1 or 2% of carnauba wax, which is a much harder wax, so it gives you a nice um, hardness. If you're using it on a cutting board, I probably wouldn't bother because you're using a steel knife or some other kinds of knives. are They're going to be way too much for the wax, so it doesn't really matter what kind of wax you put on a cutting board. Um, you're going to need to refinish it periodically. For um, bolts, I, I could see doing a carnauba wax to have a nice, a slightly harder, harder layer protective. Um, the thing I like about beeswax and linseed is it's going to have a nice soft feel. Um, raw linseed, um, I've heard, gives something a much more buttery feel than boiled linseed. And um, so come, coming over here to the linseed, what I've got here is a polymerized linseed oil or a special linseed oil. 
Um, I would say there's three types of linseed oil. There's raw linseed, which is just flax. Uh, you take flax seeds, you squeeze them, and you get flax oil. That's raw linseed oil, and you can use that with bare hands without ill effect. And um, it does take a long time to cure. So that's one issue, is that it takes about a week to finish its polymerization process. Um, it might feel dry after a day or two, but it hasn't finished curing probably for at least a week, maybe more depending on uh, the conditions you're in. With uh, boiled linseed oil that I've used previously, and that's probably part of this product, you want to use vinyl gloves because a uh, boiled linseed oil has drying agents in it. So these are chemical agents added to the linseed oil that help accelerate that polymerization process once it's put onto the wood. So you have only about 12 or 24 hours to cure, maybe more depending on conditions, um, but you're gonna have uh, those volatile organic compounds or VOCs, which can irritate your skin. And you probably are gonna wanna do that in a well-ventilated place um, until it's fully cured. And so I wanted to stay away from that, um, but I did want a faster polymerization process. So the way they used to make boiled linseed oil before chemical drying agents was actually to literally boil it. And they don't do that anymore. So when you go to the hardware store, you get boiled linseed oil. It hasn't been boiled. It's been, it's been altered with chemical agents. But what you can do is find someone who's boiling their own and uh, polymerizing it. You can, so you can get pre-polymerized um, linseed oil. They usually do that with a vacuum process. They vacuum up the oxygen, heat it um, to 550 degrees or something like that for a couple days. And that kickstarts the polymerization process so that um, the final product will dry in maybe 48 hours or cure. I should say cure because curing and drying, again, are very different things. Something might feel dry, but not to finish curing. So you really don't want to use a cutting board or anything that you've put linseed oil on until it's finished curing and all that polymerization is done. So we're going to do two parts beeswax, two parts special linseed oil, and one part turpentine. So a turpentine is a pure gum spirits. This comes from uh, pine trees. Um, this is a little bit different than the product you might get if you go to the hardware store and you get a gallon of turpentine, you've probably got it as a product that came from uh, pulping trees for paper. And I found this um, group out in Georgia. Uh, let's see, that was, what's their name? Yikes. Well, I'm sorry. Let's see, John, what's your, what's your business's name? John out at Creekwood Naturals. They are doing good stuff out in Georgia and, uh, Looking forward to using their, their handcrafted pure turpentine. Um, the, the special linseed oil is coming from a place called Earth Paint, and that is out in North Carolina. Um, someone who worked in paints their whole life and wanted to make something that didn't have you know chemical agents, um, other harmful things that would uh, hurt people over the long term. And so got a gallon of, of that special linseed oil. Probably will have a little bit left over which would be good, because I'll probably want to use it on uh, some more boards and bowls. What we'll probably do with a bowl like this is take a, um, a varnish stripper to get all the, to dissolve all the varnish off, and then apply a layer of uh, linseed, wipe off the excess and let that cure, and then once it's done, apply a layer of uh, the wax paste. And that should have it come out looking like um, it won't look exactly the same because you've got a, a Zelkova bowl and a, a quince bowl, very different uh, materials, but uh, it'll come out a little bit darker, but a little bit um, a little bit shiny initially, but it'll probably settle down to a matte finish. Um, then I've got some other products I want to use the new wax paste on just to see how they do. So here's some, uh, here's a, I have a set of four legs that I used the boiled linseed wax on, but I've got another couple sets of legs that I want to try out with the uh, monkey wax, that's what I'm going to call it, uh, for danger monkey. And uh, so I'm ultimately going to call this monkey wax. I'll have little stickers on these two ounce tins. And uh, we'll try it out on a few different products, see how it works um, and how it looks once it's cured. So the equipment we've got, obviously we've got 
gloves. Since we're going to be dealing with a lot of turpentine, I don't know how my hands are going to react to turpentine. Um, the point of the turpentine is to make the wax paste a little bit softer, so it'll, it'll be more spreadable. It won't be as hard as uh, pure beeswax. I have seen wax pastes made with uh, three or four parts linseed to one part beeswax, and that's probably what you're getting when you get a product like this, is just linseed and beeswax. But I want to add turpentine for two reasons. One is that the softer um, texture will make it easier to use. And the second is that turpentine will help it penetrate into the wood. So I want the oil in the wood polymerizing, creating uh, a more protective layer so that the molds last longer. If you were doing some sort of antique restorations, you wanted something in its pristine original state, you might not uh, go with this formulation. You want to check uh, antique uh, formulations for your own paste wax. I think Logisan on uh, Reddit has some pretty good links for antique restoration and things like that. So what I'm going to do is take this old crock pot I've got. I'm going to not do it in the crock pot because I don't want to scorch the wax. So what I'm going to do is just take this old crock pot that I had planned to, to take to a thrift store. Well, maybe I got it at a thrift store. Go to a thrift store, spend five bucks on a, on a crock pot. Um, what I'm going to do first is uh, refine the wax. As you can see, the wax came with a considerable amount of uh, debris still on it. Um, this is from a local bee maker, uh, beekeeper, sorry, uh, who uh, makes his own honey and uh, got this five pound block of wax from him. It's still got a considerable amount of debris on it. And, and some of that's uh, bees, that's bee parts, um, propanols, I probably want to keep the propanols. So again, it's raw. I don't want to refine it too much because um, it smells great. It's this local honey, local wax. So what I'm going to do um, is go ahead and put it in the oven at about 150, 160 degrees, where it, it, not too much. Um, I don't want to scorch it again. I've got a thermometer here to make sure the oven is the temperature I think it is. I've got some towels, which I plan to put over the uh, over the crock pot and I'm, and I'm just gonna cut this up put it on top oh you've got some wire to tie around to keep the, the towels in place and hopefully these towels will work as kind of a cheesecloth so that as the, the wax melts through the towels catch the bee parts and other debris that's in there and I'm left with just a pure uh, beeswax and you could let it dry from there and go through the process multiple times um, or I've seen some people pour it through cheesecloth in a liquid state. I think once through the towel, it will probably be enough. I might go ahead and do a little bit of scraping to get some of this debris off before I start. Um, but I probably want to go straight from that process with uh, liquid beeswax straight into the tins. So what I'll probably do is take all my little two ounce tins. Uh, these came from California. Try to keep it all, try to keep it all within the U.S. if possible. Not. Uh, um, even though it was a little cheaper to order things from China, I kind of wanted to stick with, with Made in America here. So we've got Georgia, North Carolina, and California. And what we're going to do is uh, probably pre-pour these. I think they're two ounce tins, so 0 0.8, 0 0.8, 0 0.4. That'll be our, our tins. I've got my, my kitchen scale here, a little measuring cup to measure it all out in advance. So I'll probably pre-prepare these with the linseed oil and turpentine and then pour in the hot wax and I've got some old chopsticks to, to get it all stirred and mixed thoroughly so that it uh, gets a good mix before it dries and forms into the wax paste. But that's what I've got. One of the nice things to know is that with, uh, with beeswax, um, it weighs the same as its volume. So it's, it's the sort of the same density as, uh, as water, as far as that goes. So I know if I've got a thousand grams of beeswax, it's going to melt down to a liter. Um, so that'll help me a lot as I measure it out, um, to pour into the tins. So that's the project. Um, I'll check back with you once I've got the beeswax cleaned off and, uh, and melting ready to go. 
Um, I might save a little bit to form some beeswax sticks in case, in case some of you want uh, a hard wax to use in your garage on your tools. Uh, I know some people like it on, on iron, cast iron, other tools to keep, uh, keep, it from, keep those things from oxidizing. Um, but for this first batch, I think I want to go with something that's perfect for boards and bowls. Um, I'm gonna, I, I'd like to call it food safe. You know, it's, you know, these things certainly aren't good for you to ingest. But once it's fully cured, linseed is perfectly safe. Uh, once it's finished evaporating, the turpentine, the gun spirits will evaporate off once they've done their job, um, which is to, to make it softer and then to help it penetrate the wood. And so um, once it's cured, um, this product should be uh, safe to use for, for pretty much anything, uh, any furniture, any cutting boards you have. It should smell really nice too with this uh, this local beeswax. So I'm pretty excited uh, about this, and uh, let's see how it goes. All right, friends, we are in the garage. We are getting ready for this project. We're setting everything up. We put newspaper down in case we make a mess. Um, safety first. So a few things. Um, linseed oil and turpentine, um, some people do have issues with these. So while I do consider um, this a fairly uh, straightforward project, you are going to want um, gloves for handling linseed oil and turpentine. Some people are especially sensitive to those products. So gloves, um, safety uh, PPE, so um, either uh, eyewear or, or something like that. Um, a mask, if, you, if you're ever doing any of these projects yourself, you want to avoid, avoid inhaling. Even if you're just woodworking, you want to keep this, that sawdust out of your lungs. Especially if you're clearing varnish or something, uh, you don't know what it is off of a surface. Um, have that safety gear ready to go. We are working with flammables, linseed and turpentine are both flammables. So we've got on hand fire extinguisher, which we've Check the uh, status of, make sure it's full and ready to go. So we've got that. Um, I'll probably go ahead and uh, fast forward a good portion of this video. We'll watch it in time lapse because most of it's going to be me cleaning off this beeswax. We've got the thermometer in the oven. We're going to see if the oven is uh, at 150 where we've set it at, um, if it holds there and keeps a nice consistent temperature. So I really don't want to have to be babysitting the wax, making sure I don't start a fire inside the house. I'd like, hopefully, for this to be a straightforward project with no fire department visits. So off we go. Might have a little bit more light if we... Oh, there we go. 
we've got the bees barracks pretty well started. Um, again, the rest should come off in the melting phase as we go through a couple of tunnels. Just want to get off a good amount of those bee parts. Next, let's see if we've got these tunnels ready to go. We've got our wire. Check the oven. Make sure that that's where the oven's at. And then we'll get these this beeswax broken up and onto here. You can buy it um, in pellet form, where it's already been pelletized, marbled down. Um, you'll see some videos of people chiseling away at the stuff to break it up to make it uh, melt faster. I'm not too much worried about speed of melting since I'm not putting this over a double boiler. Um, since I'm putting it in the oven, I think that's going to be just fine like that. We'll melt it down, see how much we get. We might go ahead and weigh it ahead of time and then pre-fill some of our tins. Why don't we try that? much is fine. We are going to lose a bit in the towels um, and with that crud coming off. So we're a few grams over, but I think that's pretty good for our first batch. We'll do that. These wax. We'll let that melt down through the towels. We'll add one turpentine unit. And then we'll need to measure out 960 
I was hoping for 155, 160. I may need to work out a little on-off cooking time where I have it off for five minutes, off for five minutes at 170 so that it's not getting too hot. Um, while it's cooling down a little bit, we're setting up our tin in up our workspace here. slightly under a half. Should be able to find a more accurate way of measuring 0.4. Let's find a tall, thin container. Alright, we had a chance to check on the oven. Still a little bit high, so we're going to try a couple different settings on the oven and see if any of them levels out at 160. In the meantime, we can go ahead and start pouring our linseed oil and our turpentine. I'm going to see if I can, can't find a way to get an eighth of an ounce. Zero that. Cut this out. Cut this out. Cut. Read the instructions. Quick and thoughtful. That's not easy. Well, I don't mind. I'm going to hand it. 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 I'm ourselves approximately. Well, let's see, that's 16 ounces. We are going to need 40 times 0.8 ounces. We're going to need 32 
We're going to need 16 ounces twice. Right. Get ourselves 16 ounces. And let's do it somewhere that we can quickly replace the newspaper if we make a mess.
All right. We're on the final step here. So we've got our windseed and our turpentine measured out into the tins already. We've got our beeswax melted down. Um, it did take a little longer than I thought, several hours. Um, I could have put it on a higher temperature, but beeswax discolors if you put it above about 185 Fahrenheit. So I wanted to keep it above its melting point, about 150. Um, my oven, the minimum it would do is 170. So that was kind of perfect, um, so long as it, it didn't uh, get uh, above what it thought it was. And it was nice, nice, right, right up there at about 180, about as hot as I'd want it. Um, the downside of not heating the beeswax up really hot is that as soon as we add it to the turpentine linseed oil, which is cold, the wax is going to re-solidify. So what we're going to have to do is um, get it in there right out of the oven. Um, we'll take it into the garage and start um, pouring those into the tins. And I think we'll just fill them up. I think to the two ounce mark, and that and that should be the right mixture with the linseed and the turpentine we have in there. I don't want to take the time to, to pour out the ounces and fill them out um, exactly with 0.8 ounces each. Um, simply because we've got 40 of them to do, and then. Um, but ultimately, the goal is this: to make a, a board wax that's uh, going to penetrate well and uh, give the wood a nice. A buttery feel, waxy coating of protection, um, and help them last a long time. So we'll get out. We'll get Sarah to help, and we'll uh, get out to the garage and start pouring and mixing those. Here we go. All right, friends, we are back in the garage. We have got our tin set up. We're about to bring the uh, beeswax in. I left it in the oven because I wanted it to stay as molten as possible. Um, and we're going to get Sarah to come in to help mix these as I fill them up. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and get one filled up and see just how high I need to fill them to get them uh, topped up with the one ounce of beeswax, 0.8 of beeswax I want to put in each. So I'll go do the first one, and then Sarah's going to help me fill these in, and then we'll do these as well. The one thing I question is how much beeswax I've got, because I did lose a lot in those filtering towels. I think if I had to do it again, I probably would have only done one towel, or maybe a couple worn out old t-shirts, rather than doing two full towels. We did end up soaking a lot of beeswax. The house smells amazing. It smells like honey bread. Um, so let's go ahead and... Ooh, let's use this one for. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring in the beeswax. We'll put it in here and we'll see how much one ounce fills up the tent. Get ready. Here's our melted beeswax fresh out of the oven. Uh, I don't know if you'll get a, sh a look at how beautiful and golden that is. But we'll get it once we have it in here, I guess. See how much this measures out to. Wax 
when it's on its heat. And the one downside to doing this in the cold of the garage is that oh, the turpentine yeah. would and the rinse oil are already cold. So if we go through, we couldn't eat out of any lumps. Uh, the wax is gonna get yeah. gonna cool down. Uh, we just sit here. Oh, oh no, it's a real recommendation. Crush. We're working ourselves. Yeah, this so. is technical challenge. Don't worry about getting wax on the outside. We've got that extra turpentine. Mm -hmm. Do I just pour until it's um, yeah, there? it's sort of at the top thread. Not quite over full. Not quite mm -hmm. brimming, but pretty close to full. Okay. Yeah, let me do that one too. In the end, it's just it's just a bit of a bit of wax turpentine into that. It's no, no big deal. It doesn't go quite like what you think. Can we set this up in the microwave? Uh, not to like. Oh, okay, well, yeah. I, well I mean, at this stage, I wouldn't because the turpentine mm -hmm. and the rinse oil are flammable. Yeah, we don't want to have to. Put some tinfoil on it to, to, to really make things exciting. Yeah, I think she looks almost the same. Two to three. One thing we might do in the future is try to I don't know, get the linseed and turpentine up to maybe 100 degrees or something. Oh my goodness, yeah. Um, so I'm really noticing how the stuff is. Uh, Could potentially very hard. even. We might want to stick this back in the oven because I think we've gotten a lot of these. I'm guessing that. Go ahead and pour the rest of the wax into it. And we'll get as far as we can with that. Oh, yeah, that's a great idea. Oh, we should put a lid on the crock pot there. Mm. Oh, that's so good. Oh, that looks A little bit funkier than I'd like on the first one. We'll see how how this turns out. Yeah, the stuff for such a thing it is.
Okay, yeah, I think it should work. One more? Yeah, I think so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll, we'll bring that up. Very bad flip down. Oh. <laughs> Where did we get? Um, we're 22. A We certainly did lose a lot of wax in those towels. And got a considerable amount of hardness here. Should have popped back in the oven. Oh, in this container is fine. I'm going to put a tray under it. I'm going to do a few more. Hmm. Let's do that. Interesting how some of these have set up. Look like they've already begun to set up while the others are still pretty, pretty milky liquid. There we have it. Our first tray of monkey eggs. All right, we're back inside. We are melting the rest of the wax in the oven. And we'll see how many more tins we can fill with that. As you can see, the top towel um, did pick up most of the B parts, and it looks like the second towel really wasn't necessary. It certainly has some color, but I don't think enough that, uh, to warrant how much wax we ended up losing into the towel itself. Um, if we had to do it over again, maybe using a smaller container with a tighter lid um, would mean we're losing less wax into the towel itself. And uh, Definitely only going with, with one layer next time, because I feel like we lost a considerable amount of beeswax in here. Could have weighed the towel before and after. That would have been interesting. And again, it's coming out definitely more um, ready to congeal than I expected. So lesson learned. Um, what I might do this second round is, after it's fully melted, um, go ahead and put the crock pot on its base, retrieve that, and go ahead and get that um, going. Even if it's even if it is raising the temperature a little bit more, I think it'll be worth it. I'll need to check the flash points of uh, linseed and turpentine to make sure that we're not in any danger. Mixing it all together in the crock pot, and then just ladling it into the individual tins themselves and that would save us needing to mix those tins if we mix it all in here ahead of time and it's all in one liquid state i think that'll make it a lot easier to pour maybe a lot less mess and should come up with a nicer consistency so we'll try that on the remaining tins um, see how it goes and let those cool until tomorrow then we'll try giving a few things a polish and i'll, I'll show you how that all looks all right friends All right, friends, we have got our molten beeswax. And what I've gone ahead and done is heat, heated up the turpentine and then see just slightly. Be careful because turpentine has a flash point of about 95 Fahrenheit. Now, flash point means that you come into contact with an open flame or you otherwise give that vapor a chance, it's going to ignite. 
we're hoping here is that given a little more heat, we can keep it all liquid. Enough to get it mixed. And then we can just pour it. So that's the theory. At least. Good mix. Let's go ahead and pour it. Mm -hmm. And it's alright if we're a little messy. We've got enough turbine time. We can clean this up tomorrow. So just want to get these nice and full. And it should much easier to mix them by hand. The very significant downside is keeping the turpentine is dangerous. And it's a big fixer. To do it. it. Looks like we came up with 32 out of 40 tins. Not bad, but it also means we need to refine on our mix a little bit. So that's all for now. I'll let this set overnight. Again, we're going to take anything that got linseed oil on it, we're going to lay it flat. Uh, where it can dry on the pavement so that overnight it doesn't uh, start a fire on it. Hey friends. Well, it's the next day. Everything's had a chance to set up overnight and I thought what I'd do today is uh, do a bit of a wrap up um, and test it out. So one thing I thought of that I hadn't covered um, regarding safety um, was fire extinguisher placement. Quick pro tip, put it by the door. That way, if you are fleeing the building due to fire, you have a choice. The fire extinguisher is right there. You can take it and fight the fire if it's safe to do so, or you can just leave. So always keep your fire extinguisher by the door. It just uh, makes good common sense. So, um, here's the monkey wax. Got a nice shade, nice, nice yellow beeswax shade on it. I'm not sure how soft it is, so I'm just going to uh, take some out. It does come up pretty easily. We're going to put some in an applicator, and I'm doing this rather than putting a steel wool in here because I don't want to get steel wool in my tin. We'll take up a bit and mush that in the steel wool a little bit. Oh, it mushes very nicely, very mushy. And let's go ahead and see what kind of color we give this light wood with a, uh, a bit of monkey wax. Give you a look at what we're, we're working with here. And away we go. Hopefully we'll have Sarah come in. Uh, she helped out yesterday and I'd like her to see the finished product and like for you to be able to, to meet her as well, more officially. Might time lapse through this one if it, if it takes me a while. But uh, you can use a, a cloth for application and you can also wear gloves. Again, if you have a sensitivity to linseed or to turpentine and you want to wear gloves for this because I'm using um, a raw processed linseed instead of the boiled linseed oil I feel much much better about handling it with my bare hands but if I do have any reaction to it I'll let you know there we go 
It shouldn't take too much because what we're really doing is, is putting a wax coating on the whole thing. And so we're going to work, work the wax into the grains of the wood, into the pores, work our way around kind of with these uh, gardenia shaped legs that I can never remember which sides I've gotten and which sides I haven't. But it should be pretty apparent from the sheen what I still have left to do. Sometimes when I'm cleaning these legs up, I do see quite a lot of, of leftover wax, and this is probably why, because it's just kind of a pain in the rear end to get into every nook and cranny of the Gobon legs. Much simpler on a flat board when you're just doing a surface or a side to know what you've done and what's left. With these uh, gardenia shaped legs, or uh, what is it in Japanese? Um, Kuchinashi. There. They collect a lot of dust and dirt, and they're a bit hard to get into. So I feel like I'm almost cleaning as I'm going here with the with the steel wool is acting like almost a sandpaper. Cleaning out the dust and debris, working in the linseed and leaving behind a waxy residue. So we'll work that wax in. I'm pretty sure we've got all the surfaces. We'll give it a few minutes to dry while we go on to the next one. And then we're coming back and we'll buff it off. We'll take off the excess with the, uh, with the clean rag. And that's just a old cut up t-shirt. And we'll compare them side by side, see how see how they look. Uh, interesting uh, little piece of trivia about gardenias, kuchinashi in Japanese, is that that phrase, kuchinashi, uh, well, the word kuchinashi is very close to a phrase, guchinashi, which would be no mouth. So seeing a goban leg is supposed to be a little reminder to you the kibitz or keep your mouth shut about the game while you're watching. Not to give away anything for the players and to allow them to concentrate. Honestly, kibitzing is one of, it's one of the fun things about the game, isn't it? It's the social aspect. It's the entire reason we're playing in person in the first place. It's, it just feels better. I play online and I, I, get, I get salty. So if you've played me online, and especially if you've beaten me, I apologize. I, uh, I still have a lot of ego to let go of, and maybe that's why I let go so much. It helps a bit with that. I'm getting the leg pretty well. I feel like I could use a little bit more. And this isn't taking a whole lot. Um, I feel like I'm over overdoing it a little bit just because I want to make a point about how it's going to look. But already I can tell it's much, much more lustrous. And you don't really need to, I don't know why I'm, why I'm bothering with the top. Why am I bothering with this, with this surface that isn't going to see the light of day? Because I want, I want to protect it. The whole, the whole point of this wax is to give you a layer Turpentine clears it off, and the linseed oil um, is processed. Um, one of the differences between raw linseed and processed linseed is um, that uh, processed linseed doesn't give the mold anything to eat. It doesn't provide food for any mold. Um, linseed is, is flax oil. Any vegetable oil is going to be a potential food source. It's... Um, some vegetable oils will go rancid, so if you just use straight vegetable oil, coconut oil, um, anything besides walnut or other other nut oils that don't go rancid, you're going to have um, some, a product that you need to continually come back to and apply and apply and apply over its lifetime. It'll end up smelling bad if you just leave it. And so that's something we're avoiding with processed linseed oil is not giving the mold anything to eat on the surface of your wood and then the wax is making sure the 
mold doesn't get to the wood itself. And so between the two of them, we've got a nice, nice layer. Well, we'll give that a minute to, to set in. And then we'll buff off the excess. I'll set it next to this other one. We'll get hopefully a before and after going. And now, if I, if I was doing this with the, just the cloth, the clean cloth, I would probably feel much better about dipping it straight into the, the tub. But as it is with just the uh, steel wool, I don't want to contaminate that. So, bit of a mess. Over here we've got another set of legs. These are just from a board that was a little too beat up to, to keep. Didn't, uh, didn't have uh, enough care, and so ended up sacrificing it, but keeping the legs for someone with the opposite problem. These legs are much cleaner, so I don't need to clean them nearly as much. So lessons learned, um, it did make it a lot easier to have the linseed and turpentine heated, but I did feel that that's considerably more dangerous. Um, while, while turpentine doesn't have a self-igniting point until over 400 degrees. Um, it does have a, a flash point under 100 degrees. Now, a flash point being if it comes into contact with an open flame or a spark or something else, the vapors can begin a fire, can ignite. So if you are using turpentine, you do need to be especially careful not to have uh, any potential flash points in your shop. No smoking, of course. But putting it all together in a single crock pot with the molten beeswax, getting it all mixed up, that did make it much easier to dispense into the individual into the individual tins. Um, much easier than pouring the beeswax in and rushing to stir it up before the, the cold temperature of the turpentine and linseed could cause the beeswax to, to set. I feel like I'm leaving a lot of steel wool behind on this rough, rough surface. And this probably isn't, isn't that necessary. And I'm not going to get into Egg itself, just the just the top of the wood. And I'm leaving a lot of steel wool behind. Um, this is probably I should have checked which steel wool I was grabbing. I may not have grabbed the four hot steel wool. The thing is falling apart. So let's see. Uh, got our four after there. Our before and after over here, and then we'll just give that a chance to set, and then we'll go ahead and wipe off the rest and buff it clean. So lovely! Look at all that excess. You do kind of want to take off any any globs you see, um, especially when it comes to to wax and linseed. Um, if it has any kind of solvent in it what you're applying can potentially change the color of the wood like linseed can. You do want it to be pretty evenly spread and that's why a lot of people would uh, will recommend using a brush if you're just applying a layer of uh, flax oil or oil linseed oil or polymerized linseed. Go ahead and use a, uh, a bristle brush 
to try to get a nice even coating across the entire surface of what you're working on. So we'll give that a minute and uh, we'll come check back in and, uh, and wrap up. I had a thought. Uh, while we're waiting for those two to let the wax dry a little bit, I thought to go ahead and take a piece of raw wood that hasn't already been treated and uh, give you a before and after on that. So I've got a piece of dowel here. Not a dowel, just a, just a stick from out in the garage. I don't know what it's from. It's been sitting around. I'm going to go ahead and tape it off so we can do a before and after, we'll just go ahead and apply linseed to the bottom side and uh, give you an idea of, of what that's going to look like um, with just raw dry wood and then uh, wax. I'll grab a little bit of linseed. Oh, yeah, this, this, is, this is not a great piece of steel wool. The reason I like steel wool is that it does kind of rough up the grain just a bit. Um, and so it does make the grain pop, especially when you're using it on raw, unfinished wood like this. Go ahead and swirl it all directions, not just with the grain, but also go across the grain. And it's really going to make that grain stand up. everywhere. End grains especially will take a considerable amount of wax or linseed oil if you are if you are oiling a board. You're gonna plan to plan to put a little extra into the end grains because that's gonna soak down into the grains of the wood. You're gonna need a little extra for that. Might have to go over them a second time. All right. And I'm just going to go ahead and polish that off, even even though it hasn't it hasn't really had a chance to to set in and dry. I think I think you'll see the uh, sort of immediate effect of of what wax and linseed will do on on raw wood. We're just buffing. If you have a buffing wheel, if you have a little mini lathe in the garage that you can use to get a buffing wheel going, then you can really get a, a really nice, nice wax polish with certain products. Oh, I think that's pretty good. Let's go ahead and take the tape off. I was tempted to take the tape off. Oops. Now my hands do smell a little bit like pine. So again, if you, uh, oh, this is so dry, this is so dry, uh, the wood's coming off with the tape that I just applied. So, but I'll bring this into the camera so you can see the difference between the raw wood and the wood that's had the linseed wax applied to it. I get a nice kind of shiny, shiny coat. You can really see the grains. Um, really makes the wood happy. We'll see the, the grains on there. And uh, really helps show off the, the character of the wood. And that'll, that'll be a little more matte finish once it's dry, but it'll also have a nice, a nice buttery feel to it. A nice soft feel in the hands. So a great, a great kind of treatment to use for handle.
if you've got things in your kitchen or your garage with wooden handles, this should make a really nice coating for them. Now again, you're going to want to let it cure before you use it. Um, something like 48 hours if you're in a, a regular warm, dry climate, uh, 70 degrees Fahrenheit, um, less than 50% humidity. That should, should cure within about 48 hours. Um, give it a little longer just to be safe, um, or if you're in a colder, colder climate, more humid climate. Again, curing is very different than drying. This will feel dry within, it, it almost feels, not yet, but uh, these, these might, might feel dry to the touch by now. No, no so still a little tacky. Not dry to the touch, but uh, they'll feel dry to the touch within maybe 12 hours, but they won't have finished curing. So that, that oxid oxidation um, polymerization process um, isn't finished. And you probably want to keep them in a, in a ventilated area, especially if you're using some kind of boiled linseed oil um, mixture, um, because you've got those volatile organic compounds coming off while you while you uh, work. Again, I don't feel I don't feel so bad. It's very beeswaxy texture. My hands are feeling feeling good and coated at this at this point. But you can really you can really see the difference. All right, is that enough time? Now these legs were in pretty good shape. They were in pretty good shape already. Um, I'd love I'd love to give them another maybe maybe half an hour to, to let that set. With wax, you don't need to give it too long. Um, maybe half an hour. Um, especially if you're using a, uh, a particularly hard wax, like carnauba wax, something with carnauba wax in it, you're not going to want to let it sit more than half an hour. If you let it sit for an entire hour, then it's going to be really hard. It's going to have stiffened up, and it's going to be very hard to polish, very hard to buff out. But uh, half an hour is good. Um, Maybe we'll do another end and let that sit half an hour. But yeah, you can you can really see the difference. It uh, you've got the linseed oil penetrating the wood, creating that resin inside. You've got uh, the wax on the surface, and that's going to protect from debris, sc slight scratches, um, as well as uh, keeping the mold off of the surface of the wood and the processed linseed oil, making sure that the oil itself is not going to be food for any kind of mold, where raw linseed oil might be, um, and other vegetable oils certainly will be. Uh, that's it for now. Uh, we'll wrap up, and then uh, I'll, check, uh, I'll check back on the comments if you have any Q&A. Um, give me your questions. I'll do my best to answer them. And we're back. Final step, polishing. And uh, I wanted to introduce my beautiful assistant, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Hello. And uh, to be honest, she's the one who, who notified me that the house smelled like honey cake yesterday. I, I would I would not even have noticed. My nose my nose is not great. <laughs> but once you mentioned it, I did notice. Yeah, it was it was a nice part of the day. Um, I just came out of the office, and the whole house smelled like baking, uh, which wasn't what I expected when Solomon told me that we were going to be working with turpentine and linseed oil. Uh, so that was that was a very, very enjoyable part of the day. To be fair, I did keep those out in the garage mm -hmm. for, for safety's sake. Yes. Uh, mostly. Um, so I think it's still going to smell a little bit like Turpentine. I did bring vinyl gloves. If you want, if you want gloves. Are you gonna use them? No. Okay. Haven't been. Yeah. But um, everyone has their own sensitivity <laughs> to to uh, linseed oil and to turpentine. So um, you have to at your own risk, sort of thing here. Ah. So how how so, is this gonna work? Well, I've so I've I've put uh, wax on one leg from each set. And so that's mm -hmm. this one here, and what, and that's had 
maybe half an hour to set. And now we're, what we're just we're just oh, popping the rest so off. Already has... Yeah, it already has wax oh. on it, and so now all we have to do is get the wax off, okay. along with itty bitty oh. pieces of, of steel wool because I used really low quality. That was steel okay. Wool, I was so gonna ask what all the fuzzy fuzzy stuff was. <sighs> okay. That's me not wanting to make an extra trip to the hardware stores. What that is. <laughs> um, it's just go on legs. So um, if we had a popping wheel, we would use that. Uh -huh. And we really polish this up. Because um, ultimately, everything should be in the pores of the wood. So we're getting off the excess at this point, and uh, we should have a nice kind of a luster. I'm struggling over here with the depth of these legs. These are monstrous legs. For a very heavy board. If you have a very heavy board that needs legs. Oh, were these the giant ones that I saw uh, when we went to Denver? I Maybe, think. Yeah. Have you offered? Um, they're on my shop. Okay. Along with all the other weird accessories I've come across. Um, most of the other weird accessories. I've got all manner of go accessories at this point. All right. Nice. Thank you for your help. What was your favorite part? My favorite part? <laughs> of this oh. project. It was surprisingly fun stirring the linseed oil. Uh, oh, I love the wax hit it. Yeah, it. yeah. Um, because I have friends who do homemade lotion and lip balm and all of that, and it felt surprisingly similar. All right, I think I'm about wrapped on this one. I could buff it further. Um, um what's your what's your thoughts? Well, that looks great. Okay. Yeah, they, they they were a little bit dirty to start with. Um, if I was really, really rigorous, I would probably take a toothbrush to these, a little bit of detergent and a toothbrush. Um, you don't want to put a wet towel, wet anything really on wood, but in, in limited fashion you can as long as you dry it right away. Feedback I'll get for that down in the comments, but yeah, so we've got that sort of before and after going on. We can uh, this was, I think was the only one. Oh, the rest yeah, of them the are rest been... of them, the rest of them are dry. Oh, should, hopefully. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So that's this is our before and after. Before on the outside, after in the middle. And it may not be readily apparent from over there, but you can see the kind of uh, luster, the grains are popping. Maybe I'll hold these up to the camera. Yeah. But uh, thank you for your help on this project. Mm -hmm. Thanks Creekwood Naturals. Thanks Earth Paint for your fantastic products. Thanks Van for this great sweater. <laughs> and for shipping me stuff from from Japan. And so here we have our Two legs, one that's been treated, one that hasn't, and it's pretty. Nice little luster, very clean. And once that's had a little more time to to cure, it should be even more more dramatic. Here's a here's a raw piece of wood coming out of the brush. And that's that's our wax. Oh hey. Okay. And that's not our wax. There we go. All right, here ends the project. I'll see you in the comment section. Thank you.